just what I mean You too, T, keep it clean You see my boy, he like got a made it So team keep it clean The next undrafted rookie free agent That we're going to be reviewing Is Double E from NC State Wide receiver Amika Amezi He stands at 6 foot 3 220 pounds So he certainly He got some size on him um, And we're going to talk about some of the things That I really love that he did at NC State Going to go over his numbers And y'all know how it goes already But before we get into it um, I seriously got to say that I appreciate y'all and the reason I'm saying that is because I do appreciate y'all. Uh, and real quick, shout out to the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Uh, thank y'all for showing extra support to the channel. Uh, if anybody wants to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. Uh, and if you don't, that's fine too. Please, don't, don't worry about it. I still love y'all regardless. Now, um, one of the another reasons that I love y'all so much is because Y'all know we, we ain't no like crazy film guys We ain't no super X's and O's We ain't gonna tell you Oh, okay, this guy needs to be the X receiver We got the Z over here There goes the Y No, you can keep all those letters uh, And I appreciate the guys that do do that Y'all already know what time it is But that's not me But I, I sincerely appreciate y'all being willing to come on here uh, And have a little sit down and, and listen to whatever we have to say about Whatever prospect, whatever receiver, whatever player um, and we engage in healthy back and forth discussion uh, based off of whatever the conversation is about. I, I seriously appreciate that. I appreciate you all taking the time out of your days every day to come through. So thank you for that. Now, um, Double E, uh, the thing that I like from him, Amika Amezi. That's a, that's a cool little name right there. Uh, but the thing that the, my favorite part about his game when I watched him. Um, first I saw, when I first saw watching him, I was like, oh, okay, his speed ain't all that, but he got some decent speed. Then I kept watching him, I was like, oh, okay, he do got some decent speed. It ain't like blazing anything like that. He ain't a burner or anything like that, but he has good enough speed. Um, but my favorite, absolute favorite part was his positioning. And what I mean when I say his positioning, like if the quarterback is throwing a deep ball and the cornerback is all over double E. Um, I love how, you know how cornerbacks and receivers, they do a lot of little, little hand fighting and all that. Um, he, he does that. I mean, every receiver does it. But the thing with him, he does such a great job consistently at positioning himself for the pass and positioning himself to where he doesn't have to do, he doesn't have to get so caught up in the cornerback to where that takes off his concentration from where the ball is. So he, and, and he, it is like sort of a, a way of boxing out or whatnot, but he positions himself so well in front of the cornerback, uh, in front of the football to, a, to where the football, the trajectory of the football is getting ready to hit, come hit him right in the chest. He positions himself so well, and with his positioning, that allows him to not get caught up in all the offensive pass interference and whatnot, so he can focus on, all right, let me just make this catch now. That was my... Favorite part about his game. Favorite part. He, of course, got some nice uh, jump balls that he did as well. Uh, and another thing that I really like, too. Um, he got a little bit of wiggle now, man. He, just, he got a little bit. Like, he ain't, ooh, but he got that, uh, that, that stop and go. Because with him, like, as a, uh, especially, a lot of big receivers do this, too. I know Mark Andrews, his favorite move. Y'all know Mark Andrews' favorite move. When he catches the ball, if it's a corner, safety, linebacker, whatever by him, then he'll go, whew, He'll catch it, and whoever the defender is, he sort of swipes you. Um, but with Amika Mezzi, the stop and go. He catches the ball. If it's a cornerback, safety, whoever coming at him, then he'll, be, he'll catch the ball. He'll be running, and he'll just stop and let that defender just go right past him. Well, okay. Oh, you were trying to tackle me? Okay, nah, no thanks. I don't want you to tackle me right now. He'll stop, let him pass. He's a gentleman. He's a gentleman at receiver, so that's nice. But he'll stop and let him pass. And then he'll go. Then he'll take off. So, and then again, the yak. The yak. And like we know, that's something that has been missing uh, with these Baltimore Ravens for a while now. Uh, the yak. So, th this offseason, the way that they've been picking up these receivers, th I think they've been listening. They've been listening because they like, all right. We get nothing but giants at wide receiver. Uh, even though they undrafted guys, but we get nothing but giants. Nothing but. 
And I'm like, okay, Ravens, all right. Now, um, as far as his opportunity, his chance to make the team, it's going to be tough. It, it is going to be tough, tough. Because, again, y'all know Ravens history. Even Ravens history for guys that are drafted. Anybody after the first round, the chances of making it, the chances of being used are very, very tough. But the chances of making it after the first round. Um, third round, the fourth round, the fifth round, oh, see if they can make it now. But then they might not be used. But now as an undrafted guy, ooh, that's even tougher. And I know somebody brought up a question like, what, what were some undrafted uh, rookie free agent wide receivers that the Ravens have ever signed? Uh, and kept um, The only one that I could remember Was uh, Marlon Brown Marlon Brown, number 14 He was from Georgia He was six foot four, six foot five, Big body wide receiver And he did his thing his first year uh, He broke the Ravens What Back then it was the Ravens rookie uh, reception Rookie touchdown reception record um, he, and he, was, he, he was an impact player There were some games where he got a little cold but There were some games where he got hot and I, I think everybody's favorite game from Marlon Brown was probably the, the Vikings game, that snow game, that crazy game, the back and forth. Um, but history for the Baltimore Ravens, it goes against undrafted free agents at wide receiver. So with that being said, um, it's going to take a lot for these guys to break history. A whole lot. A whole lot. Like we talked about before, we talked about plenty of times. Um, the odds are already stacked against him. And like we said in yesterday's video about Devin Williams, with rookies and guys that were drafted, they already have to do a lot of work. But as an undrafted guy, you got to do all that work and more to show like, hey, I should have been drafted. Or, or hey, you got me. You got somebody that should have been drafted. You got to steal. This is good for you. So... We'll see how this thing goes, man, because it is going to be a big uphill battle. Now, again, something that goes in his favor is the fact that Sammy Watkins, who was not a significant part of the offense down the stretch, but early on he was, um, and also Hollywood, who was obviously a significant part of the offense throughout the entire season, him and then Miles Boykin, all three of those guys are gone. So a receiver that helps everybody. It helps all the people that are here, like obviously a Bateman. It helps him out a lot. More, way more opportunity for him. Helps Devin Duvernay. It helps James Prochet. It helps Tylen Wallace. It helps all those guys out already. But the thing, when you look at it, it's like, hold up. Ravens only got four receivers on the, on the roster? They got four receivers on the roster? Again, Bateman, Duvernay, Prochet, Wallace. That's it. Unless I'm missing somebody that I can't remember right now. But they only got four receivers on the active roster. Other ones are on the practice squad, but on the active roster is four. That's it. Ravens usually keep like six or seven. So there are at least two spots. Now, of course, Ravens trade for somebody. Okay, boom, then one spot's gone. Ravens sign somebody, get somebody significant at wide receiver. Okay, one spot's gone. And then they could get two guys. Who knows? But it's up to these undrafted guys to really try to dissuade the, persuade the Ravens to be like, no, you know what? We're going to go with the young guy. And it's going to be really hard because the veterans, they've already proved themselves. You know what they can do. You know what they, you can expect from them on an NFL level. And we all still expect them to sign at least one veteran wide receiver or maybe trade for one. I Again, I really don't even know what to expect from these Ravens right now. But for these undrafted guys, you got to come in and, and you got to try to show up. But again, back to Amika. Uh, I, I love the um, I, I love his expl explosiveness after the catch, um, especially for his size, somebody his size. Uh, it ain't again. It ain't like he burning people or anything like that. But. I think on the NFL level, one of the things that he may initially struggle with, and again, you, you will be with NFL coaching now too, so they, they can, of course, help you with it, but I think he may struggle a bit with separation. But again, that's why, uh, and, I, and I've recently heard this, I forgot where it was, maybe it was in like a Twitter space or something, but how strong are your weaknesses? Oh, no, 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 I was watching Speak for Yourself, that was it. But how strong are your weaknesses? 
Um, and then, of course, how strong are your strengths? But as far as how strong are your weaknesses, are your weaknesses things that are just not going to be able to be improved on the NFL level or they just they're too weak to where you can't overcome them? Or are they at a point where, yeah, they're weak, but I could work on that and I can get them a lot better? Uh, and as far as his strengths, I feel like his strength, it counters his weakness. Because, again, the positioning, the positioning. And we know that Ravens, uh, as far as Lamar, he don't really do too much of the 50-50 stuff. Um, he'll give it to Andrews. Andrew, he'll, he'll give him some 50-50 shots. He even gave some to Hollywood, too. Uh, but anybody, everybody else. Mm, he gave, I remember one he gave to Bateman. I think it was in a ch- oh no the Vikings. It was in the Vikings game. It was that um ugh, the flea flicker. Y'all remember the flea flicker that he he threw to Bateman? It was a great play. I love the play design. I love the play call. But the Vikings they they were on it though. They were on it. And I think somebody like hit Bateman low when he went up high and it ended up being incomplete. But I love the play. I love the play. Um, but yeah, as far as the fifty fifty, Lamar gotta have that trust for you. So he only throws it to the guys that he trusts. Uh, but now, hopefully, again, that big trust is literally big trust. And he spreads it out uh, to the other guys as well. So we'll see what happens with Double E. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, had to squeeze this at this part of the video real quick. Uh, we forgot to go over the numbers. Um, his numbers, because what you saw from him uh, at NC State uh, with his numbers, you saw a consistent, gradual increase in production. Um, so he was never really getting worse, but the numbers just continue to get better. And again, numbers don't tell the entire story. They really don't. Uh, but let's just look at his stuff. So 2017 is freshman year, uh, 13 catches, 163 yards, one touchdown. All right, you a freshman. You just coming on the scene. I don't really expect you to do too much or nothing. So that's cool. Follow that up. 2018 sophomore season, 53 catches. So he called 40 more passes, 616 yards, uh, and five touchdowns. So everything went up. He played in three more games, caught way more catches for way more yards and way more touchdowns. So that was a beautiful thing. Uh, then his junior year, he followed that up with 56 catches, so he caught three more passes. Um, so the, he was pretty much consistently involved with the offense the same amount that he was the previous year. Um, he... Caught for it was for less yards, so 576 yards to uh 616 the previous year, so not much of a difference, but still a difference. Uh, but then his touchdowns went down, his touchdowns went down. Uh, so that I'm sure that may have been a little bit concerning to teams just looking at him. Uh, but then he followed that up his senior year, uh, and he had 12 catches. Uh, excuse me, no, 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 he played in 12 games. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mika, my fault, please. I, my apologies. He had 47 catches for 738 yards. Uh, so the catches went down, but the yards, they went up. And, and that uh, average yards per reception uh, went up, went from 10.3 yards per reception to 15.7 yards per reception. Uh, and then the touchdowns went back up as well. So he, he got back to business uh, in, that, in 2020. That's when he decided, he said, oh, yeah, you know what? I'm about to go off. Let me show these boys what's up. Uh, and then he followed that up the following year with 60 catches. So the most catches he ever got, 802 yards. So the most uh, yards that he ever got, and this is in 2021. Um, and then uh, six touchdowns. So the most touchdowns he ever got as well. So he was like, you know what? I'm going to save the best for last. Um, so, again, like I said, there was just that consistent gradual uh, improvement and production from him as a wide receiver uh, in this NC State offense based off of the numbers, of course. Uh, and like we know, numbers don't tell the whole story, but they do tell a big part of it. So that uh, was And again, nice I appreciate you all for, for sitting down and being uh, willing to just to have a listen, have a conversation, have a talk about some of these different undrafted rookie free agents. Uh, and for whoever else you want us to take a look at, any other undrafted rookie free agents, because we're going to be covering some more. We still got some more questions from subscribers coming up because y'all sent, like, a lot, a whole lot. Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> so we, we got that on the way. Trust me, there will not be a shortage of videos. I was sitting here thinking, all right, after the draft, things are about to get super slow but nope not with team keep it clean <laughs> team keep it clean said no nah, we ain't letting that happen you think it's about to get slow over here on this end oh nah mm -mm. 
So, but it's all good. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate you all for creating this this atmosphere. That's just we just be vibing on here, man. We just be vibing on here, having a good time. Uh, so I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. More guests to come uh, on the channel. Uh, so that should be fun. It's always nice when we bring people on here uh, to just um, give them even more of a platform than they already got. That's that's always super fun. Uh, and giving people an opportunity to hear something from somebody else's point of view. Um, so I always appreciate that. I always appreciate getting different people's perspectives on different things. Again, that's what questions from subscribers for, but that's what bringing on the guests are for as well. Uh, and to put team, keep it clean on to some other people too. Just go show them some love and go show them some support. Uh, anyway, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all so much. And we out.